Welcome back to the core swatching series in which I swatched the entire range of core. This is episode four, and we're going to be looking at, again, air quotes, warm reds. But definitely the cadmium red deep is going to be firmly in the core red. I just had to group five colors at a time. So I'm sorry about the very inaccurate naming of this video. But in this video, we're going to be taking a look at these colors, which are... The Permanent Scarlet made with PR168, Quinacridone Red Light, PR207, Pyro Red Medium, PR254, Cadmium Red Medium, PR108, and Cadmium Red Deep, which again is PR108. Let's start with Permanent Scarlet, and I think... There might be a problem with this paint, uh, with this lot of paint. And I've been reading up on forums and other YouTubers who also said they've had an issue with this permanent scarlet. It has a weird texture and it's not quite granulating. It's just a really non-smooth kind of color. And I'm sure you can see here, but I also did another swatch on a different paper so this is Bockingford and then this is on Saunders Waterford which is a cotton paper just so that we can see that this problem is across more than one paper and it's not just oh it doesn't go with the Bockingford it has I don't know I don't know it's very difficult to describe what's wrong with it but if you know if you've been using watercolors for a long time it just feels wrong and it's very unsmooth in how it goes down and it's super weirdly granulating but not in a way that you're used to and you can see here and I will put swatches of all the test sheets and this up on my Patreon so you can have a look. It's patreon.com forward slash autocarno. You can see here on the glazes, it's very uneven. It goes on very roughly. And again here, the closest way I can explain is unsmooth rather than it being smooth. And for your reference, in case you want to compare lot numbers and see if it's you got the same lot number, Mine was lot number 946593. So do let me know if you had this problem and let me know what lot number so we can start collecting data on what lot number is a problem so that we can make a list. However, I've also heard that if you do have a problem with your permanent scarlet, if you just contact Core and send them an email, they will send you out a new one and hopefully that one will be okay. But this was not what I was expecting from a PR168. It's definitely not what I was expecting from Core either. Until this is sorted, I would definitely just leave it alone because this is not how watercolor should behave. And I feel really bad, like kind of slagging off um, this color, but I've got to be honest with you guys that I personally, with the one that I got given, had a problem with this color. I can't recommend this to anybody. Um, I will describe it for you though, so you guys know, but also know that this is a problem batch. It is a orangey red again, and it's very good at the gradation you get five clear stages which kind of tells me that there's something wrong with it because core colors tend to be really wild and you don't get five clear stages and it just it felt like i was painting with sand or something the control or the reaction of how core paints react to water and you adding more water it wasn't there it is classified as semi-transparent, and I would argue this batch certainly was semi-opaque. It, it's classified as staining, but it's very heavily staining. But I think that's probably a problem with the binder because, I don't know, it, I would say that it, it's not oil, but it felt like I was glazing with thin layer of oil paint in that 
it doesn't quite self-level quite well. It would be a nightmare to try and paint with this, let's put it that way. In terms of glazing, it does glaze well because it's so heavily staining that you're not going to get that paper lifting. But as I said, very uneven layer to go down. And you get a lot of kind of granulation. I would say this more foculation. There's a lot of texture happening here. But this, I think, is the only one where you actually see the outline and then the middle bit. Like, I don't know what's happening here at all. It is made with anthraquinone scarlet and dispersion is very poor. And again, this is why I, I'm like, it's probably the problem with the binder because the binder should just carry the pigment across with that aquasol happening. Um, this, I think, is the least dis spreading color in the whole series, but also there's a problem with it. So it a, a good quality permanent scarlet that has isn't a problem batch is going to behave very differently to this and it'll be really interesting to test out a batch of permanent scarlet that doesn't have this problem then we have the quinacridone red light and this definitely has a very pink undertone to it it's very warm it's red but with a corally color. If I were to pick a corally color out of the range, I would pick this one. It's got, it's either a warm pink, as in a pink that has an orange hue, or a pinky red orange. It's that kind of color. It's, it's a very beautiful color. It's a very glowy color because it is a quinacridone color. You get a mass tone that I would say is a, just a tiny bit muted warm red with a lot of orange undertone to it and then it gets pinker as you go the color gets cooler as you go down the gradation this is definitely more of a cooler color than up here this is hot orangey color and this is more of a cooler pink but i love this soft pink color that's happening here and here particularly it's like if I were to pick a, a color for the cherry blossom, I would pick this one. It is classified as transparent, and I would agree with that. It's classified as staining, I would also agree with that. Not a very good glazer. Certainly on Bockingford, you get quite a lot of color lifting happening here. It is a high tinting strength, which you kind of expect from a quinacridone color. And you get these really bright mixes. It's gorgeous. I love the purple that it creates with the thalo blue yellow shade. This is a color that I would definitely experiment a little bit more on how well it does as a mother color. Because I really like clear bright mixes. It is made with PR207, which is Quinacridone Scarlet. The dispersion is pretty wild. You get the Mastan half spreading almost halfway to the edge which is quite a lot you also get a little bit of cauliflower which can add a really interesting texture to your painting and then you get this soft pink halo happening it's probably not going to go much further than this box though i can see it kind of ends about here and here then we have the pyro red medium which is a very bright strong red but if you want a medium red i think this is named really well if i were to pick like a color that was not too warm and not too cool then this is a spot on color and it is an intense color it is gorgeous we covered this color in the pyro red episode that we had last month on the closer color showdown and it's really nice to see it again here very intense, strong, almost like a velvety red texture, gorgeous color. You get some granulation happening. You also get cauliflower happening here. So if you do want to work, to work with a lot of water with this color, just be careful and dab your brush on a kitchen towel or a towel before you put the brush down onto this color on the paper. Other than that, you will get this gorgeous, oh, it's, I, it, I, it's so good that I can't actually structure sentences anymore. I love this color, it's so cool. 
It is classified as semi-opaque, and I would agree with that. It's classified as staining. I would also agree with that. It's actually a pretty good glazer. You, you, you do see some lifting, but because it's quite staining, I think you can get away with it. You can get away with glazing with this. The granulation, you can really see when you mix it with the Aurelian. You don't see it so much with the other colors, but you see how strongly textured that is? That's gorgeous. It also makes a very gorgeous color as well. It has a very high tint in strength, if you couldn't tell from the color mixes and how bright the color is. So you, you can get some really nice darks with the Thalo Blue Yellow shade. If you mix this with probably like a Thalo Green, you're going to get a really nice, strong, dark, muted color as well. It doesn't do much with Queen Rose, but for this color, I think the winner is mixing with Iridium. It's like the sun. And I mean... You know, when you have the photograph of an astronomical photograph of the sun and you see all the swirls happening of different temperatures, it, this looks like you took a little square of that photo. It's that intense. It is absolutely stunning. It is made with PR254, which is the Daikito Pyrolo Pyro Red, which is a tongue twister. And it creates some really interesting texture here. I really don't know what happened here but it's like something blew up the mass stone and spread it uh, away so you get this really interesting almost like flame texture happening and then i know this color is going to go way further out than this box can contain i really underestimated how wide the core colors disperse when i made this box i could have easily made it like three times as long or wide and we'd still be having this thing reaching to the end then we have the cadmium red medium which is it is still a medium red but compared to the pyrite it's a tiny bit cooler and you can see that the pyro red medium or i hope you can see on the camera that this is a much brighter red than this one this one's a little bit more muted but you get this gorgeous intense red again and a really good gradation and you get really rich textures happening here you see all this texture happening here it's stunning granulation absolutely amazing so if you like a lot of texture in your red i highly recommend the cadmium red medium it is semi-opaque and i would say this is opaque it's very very opaque it's classified as staining, and I would agree with that. It's a good glazer, even though it's a, it lifts pretty well. I think it's because it's quite opaque. It's definitely a granulating color, and I have to say the color mixes for both the Thalo Blue Yellow Shade and Aurelion, again, is gorgeous. You get that sun kind of texture happening, a lot of texture, a lot of uneven colors so you get like lighter yellowy color here and you get the darker reds here which if you like a lot of texture and you want to make your painting interesting this is a really good color and a really good effect to use on your painting because even though you mixed it evenly you're going to get these interesting variations in, in color and you get a uh, more subtle but definitely still there color variations here and granulations here this i would say is more mythical this is like if this is the sun then this is like a mythical scene and this would definitely be interesting to have a play with as you can see it's very high tinting strengths i would say it's on par or more than the pyro red medium these two colors are super strong so if you have a very low tinting strength palette a lot of cobalts and and things these two colors are going to eat up your paints however if you have really high tinting strengths like my palette that i use in the studio which have pretty much all of them high tinting strengths then it's going to join in really well with those colors and they will balance each other really nicely i just love these effects i would say i would call them effects that's happening here with a texture and the color happening i would say this is the brighter one you can see the effect more 
than this one but with a sailor blue i think this one's more gorgeous than this it's a bit of a difficult choice to pick between the pyro red medium and the cad red medium so the color is made with pr108 which is the cadmium red dispersion again fantastic textures wild so you're gonna have so much fun if you like having a wild time with your, your painting this is just completely bonkers crazy you get nice flame effects happening here and then lots on lots of really strong haloing happening here definitely will go way beyond this box and then finally we have the cool red of the cadmium red deep this is definitively a much cooler red it's also much more muted it's like an old rose red kind of color rather than this brighter reds and you get this velvety almost purpley red happening here a lot of granulation happening here it's also very good at gradating so you're gonna have fun and you don't have to worry about cauliflowering so if you are not used to or you're not quite confident with your water level control then colors like this are going to be your friend until you can get more used to your water control it's classified as semi-opaque and i would agree with that it's classified as non-staining but i would definitely say it's staining certainly on buckingford it's a pretty sink glazer you can see the darker box here but the texture definitely helps with disguising that it's definitely granulation so you get this nice textured effect on the aurelian and also on the salo blue yellow shade it's not as highly tinting strength so you don't get the really dark dark colors happening with the salo blue yellow shade but it's gorgeous and then again this color is also made with pr108 the cadmium red but it doesn't behave quite the same way as the cadmium red medium did let's bring that in so this is cadmium red medium this is cadmium red deep this one stays more in the middle it's the mastodon spreads but the haloing isn't as, quite as strong or as wild as the cadmium red medium if you fancy trying these amazing core colors but you're not ready to put the financial commitment into buying you know relatively expensive colors then i have the dot card for you this month's dot card is the companion dot card to this series and this one is the warm colors of core and i picked eight of what i think are the best colors that core has in their warm color range that doesn't double up too much with the previous cards if you like to receive this and save loads of money on not having to buy eight <laughs> tubes to try them then all you have to do is go over to patreon.com forward slash autocano and sign up to the appropriate tiers so that's it for the warm reds even though this one's a cool red what do you think? Which one was your favorite color? Do let me know in the comments down below. As for me, I think you're going to be able to guess which one is going to be my favorite. It's definitely the pyro red medium. The just that is amazing. I love how strong I like my red to be really, really strong. And this is and it is intense, bright red and this texture and how the high tinting strength it is it's going to go really well on my palette but if you like a more muted and you have a lower tinting strength palette then out of this i would say something like the cadmium red deep you're going to have an easier time mixing this with the lower tinting strength color you have on your palette because this is significantly more lower than this although i would say that all of these are really quite high tinting strengths color so you're still gonna have a problem if you have really low tinting strengths ones it was a shame about the permanent scarlet being a dud batch now i haven't let core know that i got a bad batch of the permanent scarlet some people are gonna argue with me that i should have let them know but i chose not to because i wanted to show you guys the paints that I got and I knew Permanent Scarlet was a quite 
it, it, it's it's a known problem to our community and i didn't want to like oh this is a problem contact them get a better batch and then pretend that i didn't have any problem with permanent scarlet because that's going to alienate all those of you guys who have had problems with permanent scarlet i'd much rather go hey i had this problem too here's what i'm seeing and here's the lot number so you guys can compare and if they choose to send me a new one I will totally test it and update you guys on it but i didn't want to lie to you guys that i didn't have a problem with the permanent scarlet that they sent me so i hope you can understand where i'm coming from with that decision to not let them know that but i um spoiler alert but this is the only color that i had any kind of problem with in the entire range so anyway thank you so much to court again for sending me these paints these are just so much fun to test and paint with i also love this quinacridone red light as well it's such a cute color i hope you enjoyed seeing these colors in the next video we're going to be looking at the cooler reds even though this is a cooler red already uh, i hope you, you look forward to that i'm definitely looking forward to seeing you guys there thank you for watching this video and i will see you in the next video bye